What is up guys? Holograph fixing here again. In today's video, we're finally doing the giveaway result. It was a free graphics for one of our followers on Instagram. So if you don't want to miss the next one, make sure to follow all that graphics. So the lucky one was Rodrigo Hashi from Brazil, a partner architect from Terrio Arquitetos, and he wanted us to rethink another possibility to illustrate their latest contest entry about a school in a city located at the skirt area of Brasilia. They didn't request anything special for the final result, and the 3D they sent me had lots of details. So I decided to go for an anaxometric view in a kind of college type illustration, overlaying some basic SketchUp 2D exports with an override material render from V-Ray, and then finally doing the post-production in Photoshop. So before we get to the post-production part, if you want to know more about Rodrigo and the architecture office and the project, I'm going to link all the info in the video description. As you can see, I'm exporting two things from SketchUp, surfaces and lines, all in PNG. And I'm using a huge image size with that option of analyzing to get the best quality possible. Just make sure to get that option back to the original state after you're done exporting, because it takes a lot of memory to run with the high analyzing. Now, in the V-Ray option, we're not gonna do much, just activate the material override and the emit occlusion as well. Also, put some under elements to help us in the post production part. And don't forget to tweak the sun settings to get the best shadow composition. Now into Photoshop. Just drag and drop everything into a single file. We're gonna do a, a file size of like 3000 pixels wide. And the 8000 that we exported from SketchUp is gonna help to maintain a quality, even though we're gonna resize it down. And then make sure to put everything in the same scale, both the render, uh, and the 2D export from SketchUp. And this part might take a while, but the more time you spend here, the better result you will get later, and the easier it will be to select parts and overlay lines and stuff like that. So take your time. So we're gonna use the flat layer as our base. And make sure to back up everything in a folder, uh, in case you mess up anything, it's, uh, it's gonna be already on scale. This part I'm using a mask to hide some, some parts of the streets that I didn't wanna show. But luckily I used masks because later uh, I wanted to show everything and completely fill the whole canvas with the area. Always remember to work in a non-destructive way, creating masks and as many layers as you need. Now, after I was done with the base, I went to the override material render, and since we just wanted the shadows to show, in other words, the black parts, we're gonna use the multiply blending mode. But first, hit Ctrl L, bring out the levels adjustments, and get the contrast very high, just like so. So when we put the blending mode to multiply, only the, the very dark areas will appear. We can, we can also use the mask to hide some, some elements, just like the curve that was showing there. To make that transparent roof in this axonometric top view cut, we need to export that separately. So go back to the SketchUp and hide everything else but the roof. And just like we did it before, render the uh, uh, override material pass and export some lines from SketchUp. Put that on scale and place it like so. Also, don't forget to use the levels adjustments on the override materials just like we did on the, the base and set it to multiply. So I've said it many times that illustrating and doing post-production of an image isn't a linear process. So don't be afraid to test out new things. Just like I did here, I expanded the canvas, but you're gonna see that later I undid that and got back to, got back to the 16 by nine frame. The basic section cut from SketchUp doesn't fill the walls that you're cutting. 
of the section part. I know there are some plugins that do it, but I find it much faster to just do it in Photoshop and Illustrator and get it, get it over with. But don't forget to do it, it adds that extra details that brings the image together. Just create a new layer and with the hard brush, paint it black. Just like I mentioned, I'm gonna expand the streets to fill in the canvas. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this basically in Photoshop, just with brushes, hard brushes, and selection tools. You could go to the 3D and, and redo it, but I find it much faster to just do it here since it's a very college type illustration. If it was a, a full render, uh, it would be another thing. It might be best to go back to the 3D. But in this case, let, let's just do it like this. Just a quick tip, if you control left click on the layers thumbnail, you're gonna uh, select everything that is inside there. So in this case, I was selecting the streets with the layer underneath it and erasing everything that was in the selection to the grass. Here I'm adding stroke to the roof and I create a duplicated layer and took the fill to zero and added the stroke uh, effect and that will do is just leave the stroke 100% and everything else hiding. Remember that I expanded the canvas to get a square ratio to the image? Well, you saw that I undid that, but now I have to move all the layers back to the center. Maybe a bit a bit lower than, than before, just to centralize the, the axon metric to the center of canvas. But th this is very easy to do since we're, we're using a non-destructive workflow. And with, if we had flattened all the layers that would be almost impossible or we would have to do a much much more work to to accomplish that now that we have our composition ready it's time to add some specific details we're going to use a line pass exported directly from sketchup in the multiply blending mode uh, that blending mode hides the all the whites and show the shows the black just like we did before we're going to use this to add the lines between the concrete cladding that the architects designed for this project. Now it's time to add scale figures or cutouts. And I'm going to use the scale figures pack designed and created by us. You can get the pack on the first link in the video description. This pack comes with 15 hand draw people in 4 different styles, both in black and white versions. And it also comes with 20. 
21 types of vegetations that we're also going to use some of it later in this drawing. There's no specific steps or secret to this part, just drag and drop the scale figures into Photoshop and scale it down accordingly and place it like so. We're gonna we're gonna merge them together using Ctrl E so it's so we don't have that many layers on our file. And if you want to duplicate that, just make a selection over the, the cutout and using the the Alt key, drag and drop to duplicate it. Then we're gonna lower the opacity and it's time to add the vegetations. Usually I don't like to use brushes for trees, people or anything related to cutouts. I think it's best to have them individually uh, selectable to later compose in, in post-production. But in this case, since we're doing so many and we want some variation in opacity, size and angle, also we want some, some of them flipped, we're gonna do, we're gonna do brushes for each, each of them. So just follow like I did, just go to edit and define brush preset. And then you can, go, you can go to Window Brushes to open this tab that I'm gonna use right now. We're gonna activate the Shape Dynamics and we're gonna auto the Size Jitter, Angle Jitter and also make sure to check the Flip uh, X Jitter as well. You can, you can tweak the spacing and scattering but that's not uh, a must. And can, you can try the settings until you, you grab the ones you like. And after you've done that you can right click it and create a new brush with that specific settings, you can delete the previous ones. And you should do that for all of the trees that you're adding, like three, four, or eight, or any number. And don't forget to create a new layer for the trees. And we're gonna paint all of them in the same layers. We're gonna do uh, most of them at a 100% brush with the black color fill, uh, the ones that are next to the project. And then we're gonna lower the opacity to something like 50, 60% to make it uh, make it like it's fading away from the architecture piece. And then later we're gonna do the final one with the 30% or so. We're also gonna add a second type of vegetation. This one is also on the vegetation pack that I, uh, that I mentioned. We're gonna do the same thing that we did with, with the trees. We're gonna add some va variation to the brushes and we're gonna compose that with the trees to add that extra little bit of details. We're heading towards the final part of the tutorial and the composition is pretty much done. We're just adding some extra bits of details, just like some isometric cars and some shadows in the vegetations, but that's gonna be basically it. The image itself, it's not hard, it's just time demanding. And if you work non-destructively, you're gonna get the result. It's just make sure to, to have all the, the SketchUp's exports you can get, maybe uh, multiple render passes, the override materials, and compose that all together. Use tons of masks and layers and there's no way to not get a, a very good result. Oh, we're also adding some pattern to the road. We're gonna use the same technique as we did the stroke uh, thing on the roof. We're gonna get the fill to zero and using the pattern overlay, we're gonna add some multiply dots pattern to the road itself. One thing that I like to do on, on flat color surfaces, like the grass for example, is to add some noise. So go to filter noise, add noise, maybe just like three, two or three percent amount, and then create a new layer on top of that using a splatter brush, painting some, some dirts, and set it, the blending mode to soft light. We're, we're also gonna do that a second time, create a new layer and using this watercolor brush, add that shadow that I mentioned. Make sure to tweak the brush opacity or the layer opacity to not get a very strong effect, but very subtle. And those street marks are, are done using a pen tool with the shape uh, 
shape type, make sure to select the dash line and tweak the settings to get the correct size and spacing between the dashes. So as a final touch of fact, I like to add some color balance to get the shadows to a color tone and the highlights to a, a warmer tone. And then Ctrl Shift Alt E to merge them a copy altogether. And you can add uh, the final plugin, for example, the Topaz Clarity plugin, or maybe some camera raw filter that does almost the same job. And you're done with your image. This is the final result. We've come a long way from the, the base render, the base export from SketchUp actually. So I hope you guys liked the video and just remember this was a result of a giveaway that we did on Instagram. So make sure to follow O.Graphics to participate on the next one. And this project is from Tehu Architectus and this image was done for Rodrigo Hashi and he's going to receive the full PSD to hopefully learn some new techniques. And if you want to know more about the architecture office, I'm going to link their website and also their Instagram on the video description. Just one more thing before I go, the link to get the scale figure spec is also on the video description. So let me know what are your thoughts on this video, if you liked some more content of this one. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!